Last week, we went over the second part of rhythm. We started talking about syncopation. And if you remember three weeks ago, we had our first introduction to melody. We started talking about steps and leaps, the difference between a whole step or a whole tone um, and a half step or a semitone. Um, <clears throat> Then we talked about uh, intervals, and now we're going to try and combine uh, a little bit of what we talked about with harmony uh, in terms of intervals, and really expand a lot on what we talked about for uh, melody and scales. Because I introduced you to major and minor, as well as the pentatonic scales, but you've probably seen that there's a lot more to scales than just major and minor. And hopefully today we're going to try and dissolve as many of those as we possibly can. Now, to give you a little bit of a refresher, real quick, we can mark a major and minor scale using uh, Arabic numbers and a single pair of lines. That's kind of a really bad way of phrasing it. A pair of lines, not a single pair of lines. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do our, um, our demarcation for scale degrees, which is just the, the numbers one through seven. And you put a little hat or a carrot over the uh, scale. I keep forgetting we, we go only up to seven. We're going to worry about the stuff that goes past seven in four weeks, in four weeks. But if you have a dashed line between three and four and a dashed line between seven and what would be an imaginary one circling back around, because you can look at this as, you know, it goes on to infinity in either direction. You're just constantly looping. So you can look at the dash line right there and right there. And it's all the same sequence of lines. These dash lines refer to the half steps or the semitones as opposed to the whole steps or tones, um, the major second or minor second, where the major second is the whole tone, uh, the whole step and the minor second is the semitone or half step, um, you get a major scale. And by doing the same exact sequence of notes, I also forgot to put the little carrot hat on them, so let me do that real quick before I forget. That's the demarcation for a scale degree. This is how we help uh, disaggregate things like scale degrees, intervals, and uh, chords. We'll, we'll get to uh, the special thing for chords next week. But if I just get back up to this, put the little hats on, and then if I put those dash lines between the two and the three, and then the five and the six, all of a sudden we have a delineated major from minor where again, the dashed lines equals one semitone. That looks like a seven, one semitone. Now, how did we even get to here? Where did this even come from? Well, to do this, we're gonna go back and look at music from the 1500s or earlier. Kind of how, like what we would call kind of the classical tradition of music um, or the Western European tradition of music. They had to come up with some logical sequencing to their notes. Now, as we went over uh, three weeks ago, the uh, the first scale that any civilization really starts to develop is the pentatonic scale. Now, if I am uh, playing the pentatonic scale easily, I could just start from this note right here, excuse me, this note right here, which is an F sharp, 
and then I can just climb up the black keys on the piano until I get to the next F sharp. So, that is our pentatonic major scale. If you were not here for uh, the first episode of the Melody series, I just put the video up on YouTube yesterday. Um, so go refresh that. I'm not gonna go too deep into this concept, but we can create the pentatonic scale by following two very simple rules based on the harmonic overtone series. You watch that YouTube video, you'll see that we can uh, build the pentatonic scale using the harmonic overtone series, right? Now, the experiment we use was you have a length of string, you pull it taut like it's part of a bow and you pluck it, it vibrates at a certain ratio. If you have the length of that and you pluck that length of string, you get a note that sounds almost identical to that note, but it's higher. We call that the octave. That's how we divide all of the different steps in our scale is how they break up the octave relationship. The next uh, division beyond a half, the next smallest division would be one third the size. You take the length of string that is one third the size of your starting uh, string, you will get this pitch. From here, we get this pitch. That is one octave and a perfect fifth above that lowest uh, string, that longest string that we played. If you combine those two things by doubling or having the length of a string, you get the same note displaced by octaves and the next most uh, unique note or the first unique note in the harmonic overtone series is a perfect fifth you end up building this sequence where you know you take it you uh go one down and then you pull that down here then i'm gonna pull this up an octave so you can see the notes on the keyboard then you go from there you take uh a third of this length of string you get this note you bring it down an octave you can bring it down one more octave by having the size of it again or excuse me doubling the size of it again Go from here up to that note that goes down to here. So now we have these four notes. This note climbs up to here. Drop that down, drop that down. Now we have all five notes of the pentatonic scale. When you go up again, you start rubbing into these uh, these half steps that we're dealing with. Um, but uh let's say you want to have more than five notes because you and i can sing actually technically an infinite number of pitches between here and here let me actually hear what note i'm playing because i want to make sure i'm singing the right note bum, bum, bum. That's a seamless sequence of frequencies going from that lower note to that higher note. But in order to make it more musical, we create some divisions. If you keep going up into smaller fractions of the overtone series in the length of a string, you can actually get almost every single note of the major and minor scale. you will have all seven of those notes. In fact, you will have all 12 notes of the chromatic scale present in the harmonic overtone series, with one exception. There is one note that does not actually exist in the harmonic overtone series. We get close, but is still further away than any of the other frequencies that we identify in that scale. And that's this relationship. 
The fourth, the perfect fourth, is a human creation. It doesn't naturally appear in the harmonic overtone series. What we're gonna do is using only the white keys, we are going to ignore that perfect fourth. We're going to play from F to F on the keyboard. And we're gonna to listen to that sequence of notes. Sounds fine. But something is special here. Now, if you remember two weeks ago, when we were talking about intervals, there's one special interval that we don't really have a concrete name for. It exists only as a concept or as an altered note. We have the minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, major sixth, minor seventh, major seventh, and octave, and then you get all the stuff above it. I missed one. That one right there. As an abstract concept, this interval is called a tritone. We never refer to that when we are actually listening to music. Instead, we have a augmented fourth, or we have a diminished fifth. It only exists in that context. So how did we get there? How do we get to that point? Well, if we are using F as our root note, what's that? That is our tritone, but it's not a diminished fifth. It's technically speaking, in our current understanding, an augmented fourth. There's the perfect fourth, there's the augmented fourth, but because this, the tritone, appears naturally in the harmonic overtone series. I even have a video on YouTube. One of my oldest YouTube videos, in fact, is about the chromatic scale built from the harmonic overtone series. And if I just open up my little notepad document right here, you can see I actually have the harmonic overtone series written out for all of this stuff. You see, the tritone appears at the 11th harmonic, including our root. The perfect fourth, which isn't actually the perfect fourth, is 10 harmonics later. It isn't until we get to the 21st harmonic that we get even close to the perfect fourth. Because of that, it is believed I don't have the concrete evidence for this. I definitely recommend you go look up uh, stuff from other musicologists, people who study the history of music and sound. Uh, they would have a more concrete evidence or, or example or understanding for you. But in terms of trying to explain this concept, we can make an argument at least that we started from that as our first seven note scale. We currently refer to this as something known as a mode, and we call it the Lydian mode. When you go much further into your studies of music theory, you might come across this concept of counterpoint, and uh, counterpoint was a very popular form of music composition especially through the 14, 15, and 1600s. It's still present even today, but it appears in different forms. Uh, the classical form of counterpoint is having two independent melodies existing at the same time, where each melody is independent. Each melody is singable by a human, 
and we can always hear the melodies even when they're played together. They have their own identity. We started to develop these rules, big air quotes there, huge air quotes, huge air quotes on rules there. These conventions around ways to use all of these notes while making it easy for people to sing and while maintaining independence of voices. This will come into play when we start talking about uh, functional harmony. One of the key rules was that if you are going to have a melodic leap of a tritone of fa to t or fa to c, depending upon how you're uh, reading the notes, instead you want to diminish t. And that felt more comfortable. It was easier to sing, so bum 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 bum. It's a very different sensation in your throat when you feel those, because uh, this is a very tense interval. It has a very um, uh, disparate harmonic ratio. You can Google that uh, and kind of see the difference between like a perfect fifth, which is a three to two, and a tritone, which is I believe 11 against 12 or uh, 11 against 13. It's some weird, it's some weird ratio. It's weird. And a perfect fourth is a much simpler ratio. So as we started developing our melodies, uh, we found that, well, we can tweak this tense thing and get this new note. Ooh, that sounds kind of nice. That sounds really cool, but this... This feels way more stable. So over the eons, we started codifying that relationship into a specific form of this scale that nowadays we would refer to as Ionian. I'll explain all of these in a second, but we most commonly know it as major. And in terms of minor, we actually have the same relationship where if I start from F, And then I climb down to the D. This was the minor scale that felt the most natural when you build it off the harmonic overtone series. And this is a mode that we would call Dorian. But you still want to avoid that tritone. So you lower it. and you get the mode known as Aeolian, or natural minor. So let's take a brief detour now and actually list out all of these different modes. I'm going to start not from F this time, but I'm gonna start from the note C. And we're just going to climb up using only the white keys from C to B. I'm now going to take that same sequence of one to seven. So what I'm gonna do now, and you can just assume, just assume that each one of these has a little carrot over the top, because these are all referring again to scale degrees. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that same little demarcation of a dash line equals the semitone. I'm gonna put one here, I'm gonna put one here. Then, I'm going to put one here. And then 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 I'm going to put one here. And do you, do, do you see 
something happening here. Yeah, it's, it's almost like we're going through a circle. Like if we were able to plot this out on a circle, these lines are moving to the left by one. Every single iteration as we go down from C to B. If Lydian, this one right here, is our uh, natural starting point, and then Ionian here is our stable demarcation point, let's start labeling these in a way that hopefully you will be able to follow. So this is what we call, again, Ionian. These are called the church modes. This is also referred to as major. After that, we have what's called Dorian. And I'm just gonna mark how they deviate from our current understanding of major and minor. I'm gonna call this one hashtag six, which if you remember, hashtag means sharp or augmented. E is what we would call Phrygian. This has a flat two. This is called Lydian. It has a sharp four. This is Mixo Lydian. It's a very confusing pair there, but the Mixo Lydian has a flat six. Then this is Aeolian, Aeolian, which has uh, no alterations. This is actually what we will call Nat minor. And then finally, we have Locrian, which is flat two, flat five. I'm gonna put a little asterisk around this one because this is a very special case. Locrian is a very special mode. And the piano is actually perfect for showing off these modes because Ionian, the major scale, the major mode that we start from, is just all the white keys from C to C. Dorian is all the white notes from D to D. Phrygian from E to E. Lydian from F to F. Mixolydian from G to G. Aeolian from A to A. And then Locrian from B to B. Now, I just realized I might have messed something up on Locrian. Yes, I messed up, one, not Locrian, I messed up one thing on Mixolydian, excuse me. I apologize. Uh, Mixolydian is not a flat six, Mixolydian is a flat seven. I apologize for that. I, I just remembered. I mixed up the two because of uh, where this was. Again, Lydian came first, but since it was less stable, we now think about it as an alteration of major, and we think of Dorian, which came first, as an alteration of natural minor. This is because back then, the tuning systems were different, and there wasn't one solidified way in which to build a scale. There are some really good videos from early music sources on YouTube or early music scores on YouTube, if I remember, I'll put those in the description, that talk about early tuning systems and why we even have these notes that are, what you couldn't see, away from all the white keys that we were just talking about. All of these notes exist as alterations of the different notes. that we are dealing with in these church modes. What we're gonna do now is take a slight break from modes 
and we're going to talk about other forms of modifying or augmenting scales. If I jump down here, let's take a let's take a closer look at Aeolian, our natural minor scale. I'm just going to call this one nat lowercase m, so we know it's minor. Write this out one last time. In natural minor, the half step exists between the second and third scale degree and the fifth and sixth scale degree. As I said before, that's all of the notes from A to A. When we started using these melodies as the foundation of chords, we started to find that certain chords didn't really have the pull we wanted. Next week, we're going to talk about triads and functional harmony, and this will make a lot more sense. But for the meantime, I'm going to ask you just to trust me if you haven't looked into this before. If I'm in the key of A minor, we can build most of our chords from the function of tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic, where a minor is our tonic, D minor is our predominant, E minor is our dominant, and A is again our tonic. Now, the dominant chord is very special. We'll explain why next week. Suffice it to say, the dominant chord generally wants to feel as tense as possible. Now, if I play E minor to A minor, that sounds all right, it sounds comfortable, but if you're just discovering chords, like if you're in like the 13, 14, 1500s, and you're like, oh, what the fuck is this? Ooh, that's really cool. They're all playing at the same time. Oh, but that one feels kind of not as strong as what happens when we're in major. Now let's go to uh, A major for a second, and let's listen to those same four chords. There's our one major. There's our four major. Ooh! That five, that E major to A, mo A major, sounds really cool. It sounds really strong. It sounds finished. Mostly because we have the half step existing between our seventh scale degree and our first. If I scroll back up to major, you can see there's a half step right there between our seventh and our root. That's a hint as to why the dominant chord is so dominant. Um, but people are like, well, I want that. I want that powerful feeling, even though we're in minor. So they were like, well, what if we take that five chord and we make it major. Ooh. Now that feels strong. We have a lot of tension and then we release it. it doesn't necessarily feel as powerful as if we were completely in major. It's one of the reasons why uh, back in the day they did this thing called the Picardy Third where you would end a minor song, a song in a minor key with a major tonic chord. So it would go A minor, D minor, E major, A major. It felt more final. We don't really need that anymore, so don't worry too much about it, but if you want to add some spice, it's okay. It's acceptable to do. What happens if we try to justify that major five chord. What kind of scale do we end up with? Well, let's let's look at it. We have this sequence of notes. Ooh. Sounds kind of spicy. Ooh. I personally really like that, especially when you uh, 
you, you start on the fifth. But, you know, I'm Jewish, so I like Havana Nagila. Pardon me. <laughs> yes, it's a very Middle Eastern aesthetic for that. But what we have now is a deviation, an alteration from this natural minor. I'm not going to label it yet, but we're going to write it out. I'm just going to put an M, lowercase, right here. And let's figure out what's different about this. We have the same seven scale degrees. We still have the half step between two and three. We still have the half step between five and six. But now there's a half step between six and seven. So how do we square that? How do we get a half step between five and six and a half step between seven and one? How do we do that? Well, if you remember back to uh, last week when we were talking about intervals in the harmonic series or in the, in the, um, in the harmony part of this series, you can augment or diminish any major or minor interval or any perfect interval. A major interval can be augmented, a minor interval can be diminished, and a uh, perfect interval can do both. What we have here, this right here, is the augmented second. Each step is a second. One to two is a second. Two to three is a second. Three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, and seven to one. These are all the distance of a second. So to rationalize this, getting in that relationship, we use a special interval called, again, the augmented second. It's a major second that has one extra semitone between the notes. This makes it harder to sing which will come into play for our next alteration. Since this is focused in on our chords, this came about because we wanted our chords to exist in a certain way, or more appropriately, we wanted the harmony between the notes to work in this way. We call this harmonic minor. Harmonic minor is defined by being a minor scale with an augmented second between the sixth and seventh scale degrees. You can define any scale by its half steps and by its seconds. Harmonic minor is actually a bit harder to sing because it has that bum, 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 bum. And if you're just singing bum, 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 that sounds fine because that's just a minor third. But in sequence, at least back in the day, it was much harder to sing. So they borrowed another note from the major scale, Ionian, and they added in the raised sixth scale degree. It sounds like almost like we're starting in minor. And then all of a sudden, we get very bright and uplifted, very majory. Going back down, we start very bright and happy. And then we end this very dark, brooding, questioning place. If I were to mark that down, I'm not gonna do the carrots this time, I apologize. Assume they are there. Now, we have the half step here and we only have a half step right here. Again, it's like we're hybridizing Aeolian down here and Ionian right up here. We're taking this half step right here and we're shifting it over one spot. The reason for this, as I mentioned, was because this is hard to sing. It's hard to make a good melody using the harmonic minor scale. So when someone was singing over it, they wanted to have a melodic level of control. So we call this melodic minor. Now there are technically two forms of melodic minor. Originally, this is some extra stuff, you don't have to worry about remembering this, um, but 
originally, we didn't quite like to have this weird back and forth. So we made a little conditional, if you will. When you are going up, when you are ascending melodically, the melodic minor scale hits exactly what I have written here. So you would go the perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh root. If you are descending, you use the natural minor scale. So it used to be that it would sound like this. Almost like you're getting two extra notes. Over time, our ears became used to that sensation. So now we can just say that the melodic minor is defined by a half step between the second and third scale degree and between the seventh and first scale degree. With that, we actually have all of the standard scales and modes. And as a fun little exercise, and I want you to just write down the numbers one through seven, just like we've been, or I've been doing this whole lecture. Put the little carrots over them so that we know we're talking about the scale degrees as opposed to the intervals or the chords. And now I want you to decide where your half steps go. Last time I said you had two half steps that you could work with. We did this exact thing last week where you, only, where you had to put in two. Now you can have however many you want, but you must maintain the integrity of the octave. It must always come back to one at the end. So you could have half steps here, 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 and here, but the, this note and this note have to be octaves of each other. So pick some arbitrary number of uh, half steps and then put them down. I'm gonna go back to what I had where I had a half step right here. I had a half step right here and had a half step right here. And the implication is uh, these are going to be either major or augmented seconds. Potentially more, but let's, let's see what this sounds like. So if I'm starting on the note C, we have a major second. We have a half step between uh, two and three. Then we have a whole step. We have a half step. We have a whole step. We have a half step. And we have actually an augmented second. Oh, I think I missed one. Hold on, where did I miss? I missed that one. That's a pretty cool one, honestly. very unbalanced, a very in, unstable scale, but it's kind of fun. It feels kind of weird. Now, you might notice that if you go over three, you'll end up with some really weird jumps. With one half step, you're going to have something closer to what we would call the whole tone scale. I'm gonna introduce you to a, some of these uh, at the very end of this just as a teaser. Don't worry about memorizing this stuff. All the things up here, this is stuff that is essentially, it's just rote memorization. You can again remember that it's just starting from C to C and then just going up with the white keys for these. These are all just deviations of minor. But with only one half step, it's again gonna sound kind of whole tony and you'll see what I mean when we talk about that. With two, 
it will sound what we can refer to as modal. It feels like if we started on a different sequence of notes, we would probably be in a major or minor context. And then three gets into kind of this weird realm where you're kind of obligated to have an altered second, an augmented second somewhere. When you get into four, you're going to risk getting into diminished seconds or into like double augmentation. I will show you, hopefully before the end of this series, ways in which you can exploit the relationship of whole and half in order to get more notes in your scale than the seven we have, sometimes less. I encourage you to play around with this as much as you feel comfortable. Everything we're talking about here is just a guideline. Remember, these aren't rules, these are conventions. If you go look back at music written over the past 500 years or so, they'll generally start to converge towards this system. A lot of that is cultural. A lot of that is not like factual right and wrong. It's just this is what we ended up doing to make things easier in this particular set of circumstances. So feel free to break free of these. For example, what can, what can happen if you take the top half of the harmonic minor scale and build the bottom half like a major scale? So you would have We get what's called harmonic major, which is a very weird thing. Um, I think it's pretty fun, but uh, <clears throat> mix and match, really. You can see that if we have minor and major here, these are all just alterations. I guess that would actually be an important thing to mention is that we can also classify these all into um, major or minor uh, modes. Whereas Ionian is a major mode, Dorian is a minor mode, Phrygian is a minor mode, Lydian is a major mode. Mixolydian is a major mode, Aeolian is a minor mode, and then Locrian is a minor mode. And this is something that I actually want you to keep in mind. I want you to keep in mind that the first scale degree, the fourth scale degree, and the fifth scale degree have major modes associated with them, and then the rest of them have minor. I probably should do it the other way. Well, I guess I'll just do shorter lines. These are all minor modes. This will come into play next week with harmony. That's why I'm saying I want you to remember this. These are all major, these three. The ones built off of C, F, and G. One, four, and five are all major modes. The rest are minor. The last thing that I really want to end on here, because we're coming to the end of this, I think we've gone over pretty much everything that there is uh, to say about this subject. A bit of, I guess, housekeeping, and then I'm going to tease you with a little bit of whole, whole tone scale, and then we're going to uh, wrap things up. So I call these the church modes. These names came from other scales, other modes that existed back in like the 14, 1500s. Not these sequences though. The sequences of notes that we currently call Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian are not the same modes that they had back then. As we started to refine our understanding of harmony, of melody, in this context that Western European music was going through, we we're looking for a way to create symmetry. We ended up on this 12 note chromatic scale divided by the octave. And we noticed this really wonderful symmetry between the notes. So we charted to pick names for them based on all those old modal names, because back then they didn't really write in major or minor. There wasn't such a thing as keys back in say the 1400s. Instead, really all there were 
for you to choose from were modes. Songs were generally much more fluid in the keys that they would be in. They would generally follow a trend. You would typically see a song start in Ionian and then move to maybe Lydian and then maybe uh, visit some Mixolydian before returning to Ionian. Sometimes it would start Ionian, then it would go to Mixolydian, then would go to Dorian, and it would end there. That was kind of just based on how we had built up these scales. It wasn't until we started to get into the Baroque era of music that we found, hey, what if you started on Ionian and you stayed in Ionian? You just changed where we focused that home note of Ionian. And that is where kind of major came from and minor came from. So again, moving forwards into the present, when we were starting to label all these things, picked all those names, and we had to figure out what to do with this last little sequence. The notes from B to B on the piano, Locrian. I have this little asterisk here. You can find evidence of all six of these modes historically. Locrian does not exist except as a concept. It was a completely manufactured scale just to complete the set. If you notice, all of these modes exist as some single note deviation from major or minor. Dorian is the same as natural minor with a sharp or augmented sixth. Phrygian is the same as minor with a diminished or flat two. Lydian is major with a augmented or sharp four, and so on. However, Locrian has two augmented notes. It has a flat two and a flat five. This is considered the most unstable of the modes. Now, when you're writing with modes, I want to give you a note of caution. If I'm in a Lydian mode, it's really easy for me to kind of slip into Ionian. If I'm in Mixolydian especially, it's really easy to accidentally slip into, again, Ionian, because our ears are so used to that kind of relationship pulling us towards the major mode. Now, when you're root chord is a diminished chord, it even more doesn't want to exist as its own thing. It really wants to end on Ionian. It wants to go to major. It hates staying in its place. So when you're experimenting with these modes, when you're experimenting with kind of your own custom alterations of these modes, keep in mind how you feel the resting note. If you're writing in, say, uh, Mixolydian, oh, at first, that note kind of sounded like our center, but then that at the end, that feels the most stable. Like that just feels like we are not trying to go anywhere. We've accidentally moved into major from Mixolydian. In a couple weeks, we will try to address that. I feel like we've gone super deep onto this topic, so I don't want to overload the video. So probably in three weeks, we will talk about some applications of scales and modes. We'll talk a little bit more about some of these special modes that I'm hinting at, that I will hint at in just a second with whole tone scales and sort of give you hopefully some practical ways of using all of this theoretical knowledge. That will pretty much wrap it up for this conversation. What I want to do now is I want to teach you 
about something known as modes of limited transposition. M O L T. Modes of limited transposition. There is a whole bunch of these. There is this composer by the name of Olivier Messiaen who came up with a whole bunch of these. There's a whole bunch. I recommend you go look this up on Wikipedia if you feel so bold. I'm just gonna introduce you to the first one and I'll explain why it's called a mode of limited transposition once we set it up. The easiest mode of limited transposition connecting back to modes is the whole tone scale, which I'm going to mark with a W T. This is how you play it. And if I were to write it out, it would look like this. That's it. Welcome to the whole tone scale. We're missing a note. Why are we missing a note? Well, what, is it, what else is, yeah, there's no seventh, but there's also something else missing. The whole tone scale is exclusively whole tones, whole steps. There are no half steps at all. So to look at it, so you now know what's going on, I'm gonna start at C. I'm gonna pull it up an octave so it's closer to the middle of the screen. So you have a whole step, a whole step. You don't have a half step. You have a whole step. You don't have a half step. You have a whole step. Because of that, we end up with what's called a heptatonic scale. Hep meaning six, or hepta meaning six, where uh, our normal scales are called septatonic because they're seven notes. Now, what happens if we move this up one semitone? So we get a second whole tone scale. Now, what happens if we go up a whole tone from our starting note? Wait, that's just the same thing we just did. It's the same notes. What if we do that here? What if we start on this note? Wait, what the fuck? What? We, we don't have, we don't have any new sequences. It's all the same sequence. We only have two versions of the whole tone scale. We have the whole tone scale that can start on C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and that's it. Or the whole tone scale that starts on C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A, or B. Now, the astute of you might notice that, you know, there's two heptatonic scales, two six note scales. How many notes are there in a chromatic scale? How many notes do we have in a whole tone, in a, uh, in a chromatic scale? 12, exactly. So you can split the 12 notes equally into two six note scales using this mode of limited transposition. If we understand that you can build almost any scale you want by combining minor, major, and augmented seconds, or whole tones, or half tones, whole tones, and I guess augmented tones, that feels weird, so I'm just gonna say augmented seconds because that feels more natural to me. You can build a whole bunch of unique scales, but you'll find that the symmetry between them limits the variety of different scales. You can have technically modes of these modes. This is one whole tone scale. That's the other whole tone scale.
those are the only times when you play different pitches using that. But I'm gonna leave it to the rest of you to figure out what other modes of limited transposition there are and how many are there. I can give you a hint and say that it comes down to that whole and half tone relationship we've been working with this whole time. So think about it. Try and figure out how many notes are gonna be in the scale, how many different transpositions you can have of it, and what the sequence would be from that. We'll talk about those more in, we'll do it, we'll do it in three weeks. We'll have a brief discussion on that when we start talking about the applications of scales and modes in your compositions. We're gonna call the video here. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell thing, uh, do all the YouTube stuff. Tell me about what your favorite mode or uh, scale is. Check me out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Musar Makes. Uh, check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Musar Makes. That's where we do this every Thursday. Check me out on social media, join my Discord. We have a lot of cool stuff in there so where you can ask me questions. Which mode is best? I would personally say uh, the mode known as Phrygian Dominant. We'll talk about that in three weeks. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and this will be where we cut the video.